All right, class, so this is another heating curve type problem. So these are, are really um, popular problems, I guess. Uh, they're also very difficult. So if you're still struggling with these, you know, don't feel bad, uh, but definitely try to get stuck in, you know, and really, you know, explore the problem and really get, get you know, your mind wrapped around all the aspects of the problem. Um, and really, whenever you're doing a problem like this, you have to start with the picture. I'm still seeing a lot of us are not starting with the picture. And, you know, I, I hear people say, oh, when I have the picture, it just makes so much more sense. Um, so start with the picture, right? So here we've got a chunk of ice. It's originally minus 25, so that's gonna be sort of my starting point for the ice. And I'm gonna drop into a mug of hot water that is originally 95 degrees Celsius. So that's gonna be my starting point for my hot water. And we're looking for the final temperature, the final temperature of the resulting water solution. So it sort of suggests to us, right, that we're gonna have a, a, a liquid as our, as our end point. And the picture that I'm going to draw here I think would look like this, where this temperature up here, this is going to be my start for hot water. And somewhere in here will be my T final. This is going to be um, at 95 degrees Celsius. This right here represents the melting of the ice. That's going to happen at zero degrees Celsius. So this horizontal line here, right? That's always going to be at the melting point of whatever substance. And then right here, this is going to be minus 25 degrees Celsius. This is my starting point. Start for ice, right? So it's going to start at, at uh, minus 25. <clears throat> so from the point of view of the ice, the ice is going to first heat up, then it's going to melt, then it's going to heat up a little bit more, right? So if we imagine just having a mug of hot water and we drop a, an ice cube in there, you know, we, we know intuitively what's going to happen. It's the ice is going to melt, right? But in this problem, first, before the ice just immediately melts, because the ice is at minus 25 initially, the ice solid actually has to heat up a little bit, and then it will melt. So then it will melt from, you know, once it gets to zero degrees, it will melt going this way. And then once that, you know, cold water is mixing with the hot water, it will heat up some more. It's not like it'll stay separate. We're going to have the, the hot water and the cold water mixing. So we'll get up to this T final um, you know, somewhere in between zero degrees and 95 degrees. So that's from the point of view of the ice. From the point of view of the hot water, the hot water is just going to lose some energy to cool down from 95 degrees down to the T final. Now, what's important about this, this problem is that the amount of energy that's going this way should equal the amount of energy that's going this way, right? So this negative energy, losing energy from the point of view of the hot water is going to equal the amount of energy that the ice gains. The, the quantity should be the same, right? Like the length of my fingers is the same, but this one's going to the left, this one's going to the right. That's sort of uh, one way to think about the, the transfer of energy in this problem. So I might say that this is step one, this is step two, this is step three. This we'll call step four. So if I wanted to, to you know, write that out in an equation, I'd say one plus two plus three, the amount of energy for one, the amount of energy for two, the amount of energy for three should equal the minus amount of energy for step four. And I'm introducing this minus sign here because the, the perspective of the energy transfer is different. The hot water loses energy. So as it goes right to left, it's losing energy. So it should be a negative value. And going from left to right, one and two and three, we're gonna be gaining energy. So all of these I would expect to be positive values. Since four should be a negative value, then if I take minus four, that's sort of like taking the absolute value of it. Um, so we, if it makes more sense, you might want to put parentheses around that. So this minus four inside, or this four inside the parentheses would be a negative value. If I just introduce the negative sign there, it will be a positive value. So let's look at step one, two, and three. So from the point of view of the ice, the ice is going to be gaining energy. And in step one, that process is heating up from minus 25 to zero degrees. And the equation that we would use there, Q equals S times M times delta T, where the S value I'm gonna use here is the S value for ice, for solid ice, uh, is 2.01 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. My mass of ice is 75 grams, so 75 gram chunk. And then my delta T, T final minus T initial, that's gonna be 25. So this expression here, this is gonna tell me how much energy the ice needs to gain in order to you know, go from this point to this point. So that's 3,768.75 
joules of energy. In step two, again, we're gonna be gaining energy. We're gonna be doing the phase transition from solid to liquid. And I'm gonna to need to first figure out the number of moles, right? So this is gonna be the delta H of fusion times moles. So my delta H of fusion, that's gonna be 6.01 kilojoules per mole. So I need to, to keep in, in mind my different signs there. Um, now I'm gonna convert the 75 grams into moles, 75 over 18.02 grams. So just doing a conversion from grams to moles. And then I'm gonna multiply that by 1,000 joules over one kilojoule. So this expression, this amount of energy here, that's gonna be the amount of energy that it takes to go from this point here over to this point here. So melting the ice from solid to liquid. And this equals 25,013.9 joules of energy. So those are steps one, steps two. Now we're gonna move on to step three. And in step three, I'm gonna heat up that cold water. So this 75 gram chunk of ice is now 75 grams or 75 milliliters of zero degree water. So at this point right here, right, it's converted to 75 milliliters of zero degree water. Um, and now I wanna heat it up to that T final, but I don't know what T final is, right? I don't know what that is yet, but that's okay. So that expression will be 4.184 specific heat of water times 75 times T final minus zero. So zero is my initial temperature, so T final minus zero. So this expression, we don't know what the value is, that's okay, but we just have this one unknown for T final. So all three of these from the point of view of the water, step one, two, and three, that's gonna be this part of the equation. And the quantity of that energy, the amount of energy, all that energy that's gained should be the same quantity of energy that's lost by the hot water. So step four, so from the point of view, we're gonna switch points of view here. Point of view of hot water. That's gonna be step four. The hot water is gonna lose energy. 4.184 times, now we've got 355 milliliters, one gram per milliliter, so 355 grams. T final minus 95. So this expression, this expression tells me how much energy the hot water is going to lose, right? So this, if I look at this and I think about this, T final should be less than 95, so it's gonna lose energy. Um, we're going to have a negative value here. This quantity of energy is gonna be negative because from the point of view of the hot water, it's losing that energy. Since it's losing that energy, we should expect it to be negative. But if I wanna set this equal, to all of these, right? One plus two plus three, that quantity should equal the quantity of energy for step four. Just the sign is different. So that's this equation up here. So I will say, writing all of this out now, 3,768.75 joules plus 25,013.9 joules plus this expression here, 4.184, 75 T final, that's going to equal minus one, so introducing that minus sign, this expression here, 4.184, 355, T final minus 95, with just enough space. So now I've got one big equation and one unknown. So T final is my only unknown, so I can use this to solve for T final. So I'll show you the rest of that. But before we do that, I just wanna spend some time talking about the process here, right? The process of figuring out your picture, figuring out what steps you know are necessary for each point of view, and then figuring out how they're gonna be related to one another. That's, that's the real key to this problem. It's not sort of memorizing the, the you know, how I did it in this case, it's being able to, to come up with that on your own. That's the real key. That's really what I'm asking you guys to work on and really what's necessary for you to move on in this class and to move on in chemistry. You've gotta understand every single aspect and why I'm doing each step, right? And put it all together, that's really the goal here. So let's go ahead and finish this off then real quick. So just simplifying this, um, you know, you might end up seeing something like, we'll just keep these together joules plus 25, nine joules. So then, um, you know, multiplying this out, this is gonna be plus 313.8 times T final. That's gonna equal minus 1,000 
485.32 times T final, and then plus 141105.4. So multiplying this out, essentially, you gotta keep in mind that this is gonna be minus distributed through there. And then this will simplify to um, 1799.12 times T final equals 112. A lot of numbers here, trying to keep them straight. 322.75. And then we can finally get T final equals 62.4 degrees Celsius. So I'm carrying as many digits as I can until the very end. And then this final answer, I'm going to round to three significant figures. 62.4, that is what my T final should be right here. Um, and this should be, you know, hopefully shows you all of the work that you need to see. All right.